Hello, this is the first in a series of six videos on ways to compute derivatives. And we're going to start with the most basic rule, which is the rule for the derivative of a power of x. And it's simple. The derivative of x to the n is nx to the n minus 1. This is called the power law. And it's also sometimes called Newton's hammer. Newton used it a lot. So, for example, if you want the derivative of x to the fifth, okay, that's 5x to the fourth. But you can also use it for things that you don't usually think of as powers. So what's the derivative of 1 over x? Well, 1 over x is x to the minus 1. So that's negative 1x to the minus 2. Here n is negative 1. And that's minus 1 over x squared. Or you can use it for a square root. The square root of x, well, that's x to the 1 half. And so that gives you 1 half x to the minus 1 half, which is 1 over 2 root x. Great. Okay. So why does it work? Well, when n equals 0, it's pretty easy. Because x to the 0 is just 1. And the derivative of a constant is 0, and that's 0x to the negative 1. So it works when n equals 0. And when n equals 1, well, the x to the first is just x, and the derivative of x with respect to x is 1, and that's 1x to the 0. So far, so good. And for any other positive integer, that's what we're going to spend the rest of this video on, seeing why it works for n equals 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and so on. But that's not the end of the story. It also works for n negative integers. And when we learn about the quotient rule, we'll see why. It also works for fractions. And when we learn about the chain rule, it, we'll see why. And it also works for arbitrary n, like if we talk about x to the pi or x to the square root of 2, it still works. For that, we're going to need logarithms. So we're not going to get to those for a while. But when we learn about quotient rule and chain rule and, chain and logarithms, we'll go back and we'll see why Newton's hammer works in those cases as well. So we'll get there eventually. So as a warm up, let's figure out the derivatives of x squared and x cubed. For the derivative of x squared, well, if f of x is x squared, we have to take f of x plus h minus f of x, divide it by h, and then take a limit. And so x plus h squared isn't too hard. We foil it. You get x squared plus 2xh plus x, uh, x squared minus x squared. Oh, the x squareds cancel. And you're left with 2xh plus h squared over h. And that's just 2x plus h. And as h goes to 0, the h disappears. And you're left with 2x. Great. What about x cubed? Well, for derivative of x cubed, we do the same thing, except now it's uglier. Figuring out x plus h cubed, that's a mess. It's x cubed plus 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus h cubed. Then we subtract our x cubed. And we're left with 3x squared h plus 3xh squared plus h cubed divided by h. Oh, that's easy. That just gives you 3x squared plus 3x squared plus 3x h plus h squared. And as h goes to 0, this disappears. It's 3x squared. And you may be thinking, OK, fine. But you know what's x plus h to the fourth or fifth or sixth or seventh? It's going to get complicated. But in fact, there's a way to simplify this. We don't really care about all of the details of these terms. These are terms with two or more powers of h. And we're going to just abbreviate that as o of h squared. So whenever we write O of h squared, we mean terms involving h squared or h cubed or h to the fourth or so on. And whenever you have something that's O of h squared and you divide it by h, you wind up with a bunch of stuff that has at least one power of h in it. So this stuff we're going to call O of h. And as h goes to zero, all of the O of h terms go to zero. So we've got 3x squared plus o of h, and that, goes, and that goes to 3x squared. So let's see if we can understand powers of x plus h using this o of h notation, o of h and o of h squared. So x plus h squared, x squared plus 2hx plus x h squared, and we're going to write that as x squared plus 2xh plus order h squared. OK. But what about x plus h cubed? Well, you get eight x plus h cubed by taking x plus h squared and multiplying by x plus h. So 
when you multiply by x, x squared times x is x cubed, 2xh times x is 2x squared h. Things with two or more powers of h in them, you multiply by x, they still have two or more powers of h in them. And when you multiply by h, x squared times h is x squared h. And anything with an h multiplied by h gives you a two powers of h. And anything with two or more powers of h multiplied by h, it still has two or more powers of h. So those are the terms that we don't care about. We get x cubed plus 3x squared h plus order h squared. Fourth power, well, you just take what you, we did for the third power and multiply it by x plus h. Multiply by x and you get x to the fourth plus 3x cubed h plus order a, uh, h squared. And then the multiplying by h gives you another x cubed h. So now we've got x to the fourth plus 4x cubed h plus order h squared. Do you see the pattern? We had 2xh, then we had 3x squared h, then we had 4x cubed h. So I claim that in general, when you take an nth power, you're going to get nx to the n minus 1h, and then all the other noise. And we've already checked this for n equals 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, if you know that it works for a certain power, then you just multiply that power by x plus h, and you do it exactly the way we did before. Multiply by x, multiply by h, you get this one extra term, and you get that the formula works for the next power. So this is called a proof by induction. This argument shows that once you know it's true for n equals 1, it's true for n equals 2. Once you know it's true for n equals 2, it's true for n equals 3, n equals 4, n equals 5, n equals 6, so on down the line. So now that we know that it works for all of these things, we can go back to computing our derivatives. The derivative of x to the n, x plus h to the n minus x to the n over h, take a limit, x to the n plus nx to the n minus 1h plus order h squared minus x to the n. The x to the n's cancel. nx n to the n h plus order h squared divided by h. That gives you nx to the n minus 1 plus order h. These terms had two powers of h. You divide by h. Now you've got one power of h. One power of h that goes to 0 as h goes to 0 and you're left with nx to the n minus 1. And we're done.